Welcome to another edition of Matthew's Mastercam Tips. Today's blog will be a video taken from our new course, 2D High Speed Dynamic Milling. This video is part two of five in the dynamic milling section of this course. This video covers the use of approach settings as well as the first pass offset and feed reduction settings. 2D Dynamic Milling, part two. The previous video finished off looking at the cutting method settings. In this video, we will continue exploring the dynamic milling toolpath settings, starting off with the approach parameter. Open operations number eight's cut parameters page. The approach setting consists of two fields, an approach distance value field and a general start location pull down menu. The combination of these two fields allows specifying of the starting location of the toolpath. The general start location pull down menu allows for a combination of top, bottom, and middle with left, right, and center. This results in eight possible selections. The approach distance will apply a starting location to the toolpath to specify distance away. Start a backplot of OP8 now. OP8 is set to bottom left. Its toolpath starts in a specified location. Backplot both OP9 and 10. These toolpaths start in their respective locations as well. OP11 shows the effect of applying an approach distance. The direction of this extension will be tangent from the starting motion of the toolpath. Use approach distance and general start location to control the starting position of this toolpath. The next group is first pass offset and feed reduction. Open the cut parameters of OP12. First pass offset and first pass feed reduction are located near the top of the page. First pass offset takes a direct value as an input, whereas first pass feed reduction will take a percentage value. The effects of this setting can be seen much better if we look at the toolpath from directly above it. Switch to a top view and select OP12 so its toolpath is visible. Notice the starting location and the amount of the toolpath that overlaps the outside of the part. Switch between selection of OP12 and OP13. OP13 has a first pass offset of 0.1875 applied to it. Launch OP12 into a solid verification. If needed, turn the visibility of the holder off. This will make seeing the tool and its material engagement easier for this situation. This toolpath immediately starts to engage the stock, and the cut depth slowly increases until the specified step over amount is reached. Repeat for OP13. You can see this OP's first pass is cutting bigger than the specified stock. Make note of the feed rate as well. Repeat the verification for OP14. OP14 has the same settings as OP13 but also includes a first pass feed reduction of 50%. Notice the specified feed rate when the first pass is cutting, and then the increase once the first pass completes. If the actual piece of stock is exactly as we've created for the simulation, we should have no problem. But what if our stock has been saw cut and the cuts vary from piece to piece? This is where first pass offset can become useful. If the part is larger than has been programmed for, an unexpectedly heavy first cut can occur and can result in damage to the cutter. Having the ability to offset the first pass amount and also reduce its feed rate help to resolve this type of situation. This wraps up the offsetting parameters. 
In the next video, we will continue on with the gap and motions group.